one and all. Welcome back. The other week I was watching Mr. Tim's new ideology video and I was like, want that, want that, want that, want that, want that. Suddenly realised my budget is just not going to stretch that far. So I narrowed it down somewhat and it was still like, okay, Carol, you're still pushing it just a bit. Um, so the main thing that I really wanted, there were three things. There were the, um, the tiny paper dolls, the portraits, which I still haven't ordered yet. And then the wooden vignette card file. <clears throat> and Art from the Heart is in Harrogate, which is in Yorkshire. So it's it's sort of, I would say down the road, but it's not quite down the road. But uh, it's our nearest sort of craft store that sells, obviously, Tim Holtz products. Um, and they are £7.99 each. And I was like, oh, I need about anywhere between five and ten of those. So even if I work on the premise of ten... That's like £80. I was like, I haven't got £80 spare. So I came up with a cunning plan. <clears throat> so whilst I would have liked to have purchased it, Mr Tim, I do apologise, but my budget sometimes just can't stretch that far. So I decided to have a go at making my own and I, I had a bit of a search for some wooden boxes online. Now I've written down the measurements here so that we can do a little bit of a comparison but I found this blank wooden box on the works which is in the UK so for anyone abroad I'm sorry you're not going to be able to order from the works but I am more than sure you will be able to find your own wooden box if you want to have a go at making your own <coughs> excuse me and it comes with the little latch on it and a lid okay so that's that's the box now here's the kicker, £2 as opposed to £8 for this box, okay? So the measurements on this, I'll give you in inches and in centimetres. So the length of the box was 5.375 inches, which I thought was a curious figure anyway, which is 13.65 centimetres. Right, so let's line my box up the same. The length on this box is six and seven eighth inches long, which is seventeen point four six centimeters. Okay, so fractionally longer than this one. <coughs> Excuse me. The width of the box on this is three point six two five or nine point two one centimeters. And this one is three and three quarter inches or 9.53 centimetres. So not far off being the same. There is one difference, the height. Now, I'm taking into account this height, OK? Not the full box height, just the height of the base piece. And the height on Tim's is 1.75 inches which is 4.45 centimetres, and this one measures 1 and 3 eighths inches, which is 3.49 centimetres. So it's about um, a centimetre smaller. It's not as deep. But, you know, it's not far off, is it? So I ordered four because I thought I'll, I'll just give it a go and, and see what happens. Anyway, turned out great. So I've ordered another six. So I've managed to get 10 boxes plus two lots of postage for, hang on, so that's 10, so that's 20, plus the 2.99 postage each time, 26 pound for 10, as opposed to 80 pound for 10 of Tim's. Now, admittedly, I am going to be using some other stuff on top of this, which costs me a bit of money, but not a lot. So you've seen me use this before, which is my brown cherry blossom um, shoe polish. So I'm going to use that because I've still got some left and I've got another one on the way. And then when I had a search through my stash, I'd got this little 
little metal piece here so you can see if you can see in the picture it's very very similar so even if I had to go and purchase some more of these it's not going to cost me an awful lot of money and that was all I needed to be able to make this now there is one other thing that I needed as you can see here there's some dividers in this so I've got some thick chipboard so I just cut those down to size and stuck them in but it means that I can position them where I want them to be once I've worked out what I want in the base of this box okay so I'm going to unscrew with my little tiny screwdriver here I'm going to unscrew all of these pieces and I'm going to take off the two hinges so that's some extra in my back pocket and I'm going to take off this latch which is also an extra which is in now my stash I'm going to leave these corners on the top lid for now but I'm going to go off and go and unscrew all those pieces and then I'll be back that's it now all taken apart so I've got all these extra findings here and that's the one that I'm going to be attaching in a bit. Now if you wanted to be really, you know, thorough, there's little screw holes here where obviously I've taken the screws out and it's raised the wood up just a little. Because mine's going to be on display this way, so this is going to be the front, I'm not actually going to see these. But if you want to be real particular about it, you could sand it down with a little bit of a nail file. But I really shouldn't be doing any sanding because I can't really accommodate the dust uh, for my lungs. And I don't really want to wear a mask just for these little bits. So I'm just going to squidge it over, you know, and get rid of the, the excess little bits. But if you really wanted to, you could file that down and fill it in with a little bit of wood filler if you want wanted but I'm not that bothered about it because as I say it is only for me you know so then I just get my shoe polish and I've got a piece of paper underneath to just protect my table and I'm just going to squidge and it's been a couple of days since I used it I'm just going to squidge the shoe polish on here and spread it about and it's enough to just stain the wood now as I say I have shown this technique before so it's nothing new from me and I'm sure it's nothing new in the world of uh, creating in the grand scheme of things but it's just to give me that lovely dark wood and it's dead cheap so I'm not using any of my special paints or anything like that up just some basic shoe polish so i would do that all the way around and i would do this top lip as well and get that covered now the inside's a little bit more difficult to do because i can't get the dobber in there so i have an old paintbrush one of my cheap hobby crafty ones i'm just going to squidge some of that in there Okay, and then I'm going to quickly get my paintbrush before it all settles and just paint it about so that the inside is the same as the outside and it has that old vintage look about it. And then I can get into all the little nooks and crannies to get it all the same colour. So again, I'm going to go off and go and finish this and then I'll be back. Okay, step number three. So that's now all been dyed with the shoe polish. So as you can see, it's turned out quite nice. And then I'm going to place this on here. Now you could measure this out if you want, but I'm just going to eyeball it because at the end of the day, it is only for me. And then I'm just going to get my Posca pen and hopefully that will just little dot through there and through there and I've got a little mark where my screws need to go now I do have a special little screwdriver well it's not a screwdriver it's got a sharp point on it so it's for poking holes can I find it can I ek? so I'm using the finest um, little screwdriver that I've got to just start making a bit of a hole now you could use a little drill if you want and you also need to keep your fingers out of the way this is only just to start a pilot hole okay just so that your screw has got somewhere to grab onto but be careful that you don't push it all the way through and then stab your fingers ask me how I know 
because I've already done this before, haven't I? Yeah, so, so I'm just going to do a little pilot hole on this side and keep that one as the main one so that I've got somewhere as a starting point. Okay, now I haven't got any screws for this, so I have a couple of options. One is to add some brads, pull the prongs back on the back of this and then glue it in place. All right, but I'm going to use the screws that I took out of the box and there's some that are real tiny and they're gold. Now I know that my brass fitting here is not gold but if I'm really bothered about it I could just get my alcohol ink out and just colour it if I wanted to. But as I say I'm not um, I'm not being that fussy or particular about it. But you can be if you want. The other thing that you can be fussy and particular about if you so wish is if you want to varnish your box after you've done your shoe polish on it then you can do. Or just cover it with some matte gel medium to just seal it in place. And then let's get this next one in. Come on. Play nicely. There we go. So you only need a small pilot hole to get the screw started. I'll just tighten that side up a bit. There we go. So I'm going to put some dividers in. What I'm going to do is I'm going to cut two. One so that I can section it and one to stick to the back. Because the height of this is slightly smaller than Tim's, I want to be able to support whatever I, that fits into the back of this tray. I want it supported. So if I stick a piece of card to the back of it, then I'm creating the height. And I'm not going to see it anyway because it's going to have pieces of ephemera in front of it. So I need to measure... Where's my pencil? I need to measure the width of this and I want it to sit inside. So I could measure it, but I'm just going to lay it on top so that the edge of this card is just sitting fractionally inside. And then I can just mark with my pencil over here where I want it cutting. And then I'm going to cut this out on my paper trimmer. All right, I've got Big Bertha out and I know that you can't see it all on the screen. Um, and this is why I don't use it very often on the videos. But I'm using it because this board is quite thick. So I've just lined my pencil line up here with the edge. And what I'm doing is I'm just making it just fractionally bigger for now because I'd rather have it too big than too small. So fingers crossed I've got it in the right place. Let's just move it just a fraction more. Now this board I got from the uh, scrap store in Selby. And it's a real nice thick piece of chipboard. But it's red on the front and it's grey on the back. And it's got this lovely texture to it. So if I have that face in me when I put it in. You know, then that's going to be complementary to the box. So let's just do a quick. Okay, that's a nice tight fit. Love it. So now I need to work out what height I want it. Now bearing in mind that my the box the depth of my box is one and three eighths inch. I'm going to cut it to two and a half. Am I going to cut it to two and a half? No, I'm going to cut it to two inches deep. That's a lovely tight fit we like. We like those. Okay, so two inches. Don't want two or two and a half. Let's do two and a half. Oh, hang on. Let me just see if you can see what I'm doing. Okay, so two and a half inches. Cut two pieces. In fact, I'll cut three just to to show you. Uh, so 
two and a half inches and we'll cut a third one. Two and a half inches. Okay. Put Big Bertha away. She's a big mama, this girl. So, I'm definitely going to put one at the back. And that's a really nice snug fit. So that can then be glued in place on that back piece. So it then means that anything that I put in, it's got something to rest against. And then with these two other pieces, once I've determined what's going to go in each tray, I can then decide whether I want to put one or two pieces in. Okay, so that's it with two pieces in, which as you can see, look, it lessens the space between each section that you've got to be able to put stuff in, especially if you want to split them. I could put a little label on the top of these as well so that I know that each piece is sectioned. And the other thing that I can do is because this is grey board, I can actually ink up around the edges. to just get rid of that grey board look. My sponge is wearing a little thin. I need to change it. Now, I could put glue, and it could be a glue gun, it could be a Tombow glue, it could be a glossy accents. I would just want a thin bit of glue about halfway on each of the sides, and then some glue across the bottom, so that when that's put in situ it's then held in place with the glue now I'm not going to put any any of these in this one and you'll see why in a moment so these are two trays that I've already created and this one has got artist trading cards in and some art cards and I went through my own stash of card and paper and I've just cut some out so I've got some from file folders, black card stock, craft card stock, white card stock and so I've got a selection of those and then I've got these that I've forgotten what they're called, rotary, rotor, yeah. You'll know what I mean, don't you? So I've got some of those in the back. So I've got a selection of those in one of these. And then in the other tray, I've got a selection of different size tags in. And as you can see, the largest tags that I've got in here are the Ranger craft tags, of which I found a supplier in the UK. Um, and I sell these. Well, that one won't go in. We'll put that in in a minute. Uh, and I sell these now on my pop-up shop. So I've got a selection of those in there. I've got my layaway tags in there. And these are all blank. All right, so these are all ready for decorating. So these trays that I'm making at the moment are for items that are blank and ready for decoration. Now this one, as I said, I'm not putting any cards in this one for the simple fact that there are some items that you may want to put in, so like guest checks. It's not wide enough to take it this way on, but it's wide enough for me to put them in sideways on, in which case then if I'd put the dividers in, it would be in the way and I wouldn't be able to get those in. Now these big index cards, they're not going to fit in either way. So the works had also got some bigger boxes, which were £4 a go. And so I purchased a couple of those and I'll be sectioning those off and putting my larger items in there. But the smaller index cards, again, wouldn't fit in this way, but will fit in that way. But I felt that... You know, by the time I've put a load of those in, it's maybe going to be really heavy um, and unbalanced because of the height of these. But I can put them in sideways on. So I'm going to have a selection that are standing upright like this and a selection that are going to be sideways on. But there's three of my four already done. Six pound to do all three plus the little labels, plus my bit of shoe polish, and about sort of, what, 15, 20 minutes to have a go at making one. 
so yeah i'm i'm quite pleased with that and i'm i do apologize mr tim but i just can't always afford um everything that you sell so sometimes i have to try and find some alternatives so i hope that some of you find this helpful to maybe go off and go and see about making some of your own as well if you're in the same boat as i am um thanks for watching today i hope it's inspired you a little and i'll see you all again really soon in another video see you soon bye for now bye bye